Kia ora and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to explore how the techniques that we've learned enable us to solve some problems that maybe on the face of it seem quite difficult, but that we'll find with vectors actually become relatively straightforward. So before we do that, we'll have a quick review of what we've added to our repertoire of techniques so far. So we initially started by defining vectors and some operations to work on them. And it became pretty obvious pretty quickly that vectors and geometry go very nicely together. Uh, in particular, we've got a pretty good understanding now of what operations like addition, subtraction and projection mean geometrically. Um, so we can sort of think about these pictorially rather than just necessarily manipulating symbols. So we then showed that vectors are very natural things that we can use to describe lines and planes. Um, and we spent some time figuring out uh, how to write down equations for these and go between different forms of these equations. So what we're going to do in this video is to kind of make use of all of that and to solve some common problems involving lines, planes and distances. So with the tools we now have, we can, for example, find the shortest distance from a point to a plane in 3D. We can find the distance between two parallel planes. We can find the shortest distance between two lines in 3D that don't intersect. And we can find the shortest distance from a point to a line in any, in any dimension. So the one tool of our vector tools that's going to be particularly important is vector projection. So remember that the projection onto V of U is a vector that's lined up with V that is closest to our vector U in some sense. So make sure you're, com you're really comfortable with what at least geometrically projection means before you move on, because otherwise what we're going to do is not going to make a huge amount of sense. So let's look at our first problem, which is the distance from a point to a plane. So let's kind of sketch out what we know so far. We've got a plane, and we know the different ways we can specify this. And we've got a point P that's sitting there in three space, in R3. So what we really want is this distance from the point straight down at right angles to the plane. Now if we knew what that point was, we could just do subtraction and find the length of it, of, of the vector connecting them up, and we'd be all good. But we don't know what that point is. Okay, it's part, kind of, you could think of that as almost being the problem. Um, let's, let's think for a second what we do know when it comes to planes. So if we have a plane that's been specified, we can freely mix and match the different equations and convert between them. So we could, for example, produce a normal vector. Once we've got a plane specified, we can definitely find our way to a normal. We can produce a point on the plane. Not necessarily the one we want, but we can just give a point, no worries. And we can figure out some direction vectors if we want to. These are all relatively easy. So maybe the hunch that you might have is that the normal vector might be particularly relevant because we're looking at things coming out of the plane at right angles. Um, so let's assume that we have our normal and we've also got some point Q on the plane. Okay, we don't, we can't be very specific about where it is, but let's just assume we've got one. Um, and let's draw these onto our picture. So now is where it's really helpful to have a good geometrical understanding. So if we were to draw that distance L that we're after, this time along our normal vector, and then draw a vector P minus Q, which connects the point Q on the plane to the point P, then what we've actually got is a right angle triangle. And that distance L is actually the length of the projection of that vector P minus Q onto N. So stare at that for a second. Think of the vector P minus Q, which joins P and Q, and project it onto the normal vector. So, and that normal, that projection, if we take its length or its norm, that gives us the distance L that we're after. So there's a sense in which we're actually done at this point. We've kind of, at least in principle, solved the problem. Um, but we can go ahead and calculate. So it'll be L is equal to the norm of the projection onto N of P minus Q. However, this is a bit yuck. Um, why? Because it's got that point Q in it. And it seems like our distance should not really depend on what point Q that we take. It should actually disappear out of our solution altogether because it shouldn't be the case that I get a different answer depending on what random point Q I chose at the start. So we should expect, in fact, this is kind of a key point, the fact that we know that it shouldn't depend on this Q leads us to expect that if we do a bit more maths on what we've got here, that Q should actually disappear out of our expression. Okay, so we expect this to be true. It's not like we're just stabbing in the dark. It shouldn't actually be there because our answer shouldn't depend on what Q is. So let's see if we can start by sort of reformulating our problem a bit more tidily. So the problem is, 
find the distance from a point P equals X naught, Y naught, Z naught to a plane AX plus BY plus CZ equals D. So we're committing to the algebraic equation of a plane and we've specified our point. And whatever solution we come up with should be in terms of those. So we know that we're going to need a normal vector. We can read that one straight off the algebraic equation as n equals a, b, c, just the coefficients of x, y, and z. And now we just need to build the pieces of our formula from before up. So let our arbitrary point q just be x1, y1, z1. It's just a point on the plane. That's the only thing special about it. That's, this means that if we plug its components in for x, y, and z in our plane equation, we should get ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 equals d. I just plugged it in, so it should satisfy the equation. Now that left-hand side is, can actually be rewritten as the dot product of n and q. So we could sort of write that compactly as n dot q is just equal to d. So make sure you're happy with why this is before we move on. We'll need it in a minute. So from our work before, we had L as the projection onto n of p minus q. So let's substitute in our projection formula. So that is the norm of big expression in the middle, n dot p minus q, all divided by the norm of n squared, all times n, okay. and then we end our norms. So it's a pretty horrible looking expression, but actually it's just the length of a scalar, the scalar is quite complicated, but it's just a scalar times a vector, and we know how to do to deal with that. It's just norm of ax equals absolute value of a norm of x, kind of in disguise. So our scalar will just get an absolute value, and then we should just be able to continue. So that will equal, that the scalar is everything apart from the n on the right hand side. So it'll be the absolute value of n dot p minus q, all divided by the norm of n squared, all times the norm of n. Now the, one of the norm of n's is going to cancel off, so that equals n dot p, I'm going to expand out the dot product as well, minus n dot q, all divided by the norm of n. Aha, this is looking better. So now's the moment we can get rid of that q that we didn't want. So remember that n dot q was just d. And similarly, n dot p is going to be ax naught plus by naught plus cz naught. You can go and, and do that yourself if you want to just check that. And we can just plug those bits and pieces into the numerator of our fraction. And so our final answer is going to be l is equal to the absolute value of ax naught plus by naught plus cz naught minus d all divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared, that's the norm of n. Which is actually quite a tidy little formula, and it only involves the quantities that we started our problem with. Okay, so that's quite cool, that wasn't so bad. So we can actually do our next problem, which is the distance between two parallel planes, and it turns out we can piggyback off our understanding of the previous one to make this next one actually pretty straightforward. Um, so let's pose the problem first. So we want to find the distance between two parallel planes ax plus by plus cz equals d1 and ax plus by plus cz equals d2. That's, that is actually general. If any two parallel planes will only be one of those, will have the same normal, at least a scalar multiple of, and you can rescale them so that they have the same left-hand sides. And the only difference will be the right-hand sides d1 and d2. So the normal is abc. So let's sketch ourselves a picture again, and motivated by our success from last time, let's just define two points on the planes, P1 on the first plane, X1, Y1, Z1, and P2 on the second, which will be X2, Y2, Z2. So we'll take the same approach as before. The distance we're after is just the distance from P1 to the second plane, AX plus BY plus CZ equals D2. So it's just a point plane distance now, so let's just plug it into our formula from before. L is going to be the absolute value of AX1 plus BY1 plus CZ1 minus D1, all divided, sorry, minus D2, all divided by the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Okay, D2 on the top is because we're looking at the second plane. But the first part of the numerator, AX1 plus BY1 plus CZ1, that just gives us d1 for the same reason as in our previous problem. So our final answer is just going to be L is the absolute value of d1 minus d2 divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So notice once again it doesn't depend at all on our choices of p1 and p2 which is good. We don't expect that it should. 
They were just helpful to introduce to build up our argument. All right, so we're going to look at two other problems. Rather than derive solutions in full, we can kind of sketch out how they work geometrically because we can just use these same geometrical ideas over again, over and over again to make these problems work. So our next one is going to be the distance between skew lines in 3D. Now a skew line is just, skew lines are ones that are not parallel and not intersecting in three dimensions. So they're kind of plain lines that just sort of cross without actually touching each other. And we want to find the shortest distance between these two lines. So if we've got two lines in 3D, then these will normally be specified parametrically. So we should have a point and a direction vector for each one. So let's sketch our problem. We've got two skew lines and we want to figure out how, apart, how far apart they are. So we've got a direction vector for each one and a point on each one. All right, so the magic here is we're actually going to turn this problem into our two parallel planes problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one plane which contains the first line and another one containing the second. And if you think about it for a moment, it's possible to define these two planes so that they are parallel. And the way to do that is to have the planes be parallel to both direction vectors simultaneously. Remember, you need two direction vectors to specify a plane. So we're going to take the two direction vectors from our two lines to be the direction vectors for our two planes that are going to contain the lines. Right, so in principle that makes sense. We can draw these two planes um, and we know how to solve the problem. So if we just think back to what we did in our previous one, um, we just need the normal vector, ABC, and the two scalars, D1 and D2. So let's make this a bit, a bit more concrete. So we'll let the two lines be X equals P1 plus t times u, and the second line will be x equals p2 plus t times v, so u and v are our two direction vectors. Right, we need our normal, and we know those two direction vectors are going to be direction vectors for both planes, um, and so we can get our normal by just taking their cross product, so the normal is going to be u cross v. And we can get our d1 and our d2 by noting that p1 is on the first plane, so n dot p1 is equal to d1. And similarly, P2 is on the second plane, so N dot P2 is equal to D2. At this point, we've got everything we need, and we can go ahead and use our previous parallel plane solution to get the skew lines distance. So let's finish this video off with a bit of a puzzle. I'll let you guys kind of figure this last one out. It's possible to do point line distance in 2D, so points to a line, um, the same way as for planes if the line is in point normal form. Okay, you can apply exactly the same argument and do that. But we're going to do it slightly differently. If we just use our geometrical vector operations, can you figure out how to calculate the distance between a point and a line, starting with a parametric equation for a line? Now the advantage of this method is that it's going to work in any dimension, not just in R2. Okay, so your line is x is equal to p plus tu. So you've got a point p on the line which is known, and a point q which sits off the line, you're trying to find that distance. So your hint is to draw a right angled triangle. So you're going to drop that distance L down to the line and fill in the rest of the right, -hand right, the right angled triangle. If you can find all of the sides, then you should be able to figure out using vector te techniques what the distance from the point to the line is. But I'll leave you with that one as a bit of a puzzle and we'll continue on next time. All right, thanks for your attention. I um, hope you have a great day or night wherever you are and we'll catch you next time. Kakite, ano.